The simple trick that will make you feel motivated every single day is shifting from celebrating the results and big victories to celebrating the action steps, the actual input that leads to the results and the glory that you want. The pattern that so many of us fall into is where we keep working really, really, really hard. And the whole way up until our goal, we are miserable. We're not having a good time. We're sacrificing ourselves, our mental health, our state of joy and happiness in order to one day have what we want. And of course, this puts us in a perpetual loop of doom and gloom where you're not really having a good time. And because of that, your performance suffers. Offers. You're not as efficient, you're not as productive, and you're definitely not feeling motivated. But imagine if instead of you feeling this incredible feeling once you've accomplished your big goal, what if you felt that feeling every single day and in every single moment that you were working towards the thing that you really, really want? Well, you would be inspired, you would be energized, and you would be motivated out of your mind to do the work. It would feel incredibly rewarding with each step that you'd be taking instead of just at the end. The crazy thing is you can implement this right now, today. When you take action towards your goal, celebrate it. If you're counting your calories because you're trying to lose or gain weight and you wanna make sure that you're doing the correct input, well, celebrate that. If you're working out, celebrate that. Pat yourself on the back. You know, jump up and actually cheer. Do something to trigger yourself to know that, hey, this is good work, I'm doing the right thing, and I'm happy with myself. Because guess what? Probably nobody else is patting you on the back or telling you how great you're doing in practice. What I mean by that is that most people only have others cheer for them once they're winning, once they're actually showing the result. Often, the work and the path to that result isn't celebrated by the people around you at all. And that's exactly why you have to be so proactive in celebrating it yourself. I remember when I was younger, I was obese, and so I really struggled with some sports, and in particular, I'm from Norway, the north of Norway, I really didn't like skiing. Cross-country skiing was something that I dreaded, something that school made us do, and I never really wanted to go because one, I wasn't really that great at it, two, my cardio was terrible and I would be exhausted and I was really overweight, and three, I just thought it was boring. But in my early 20s, I decided to change my mind and to actually give it a proper try. What I started doing really changed my life. Every time I would climb a hill, cross-country skiing, you know, working up that hill, I would celebrate because before, the feeling of going into the hill was associated with dread. I didn't want to do it. Yes, there are all these health benefits. Yes, you can have a good time and have fun, but for me, it was linked with pain and suffering. I completely shifted the way that my brain was wired by consistently celebrating every little small victory. Every hill that I climbed, I would at least internally cheer for myself, but very often I would actually yell out loud, yay, I did it in Norwegian, or in English, or in whatever language feels most natural to you, of course. And I really want you to understand that when you make these small shifts in your life, you might think that's insignificant, that wouldn't really do anything, but over time, it changes everything. Before you know it, I was flying up those hills and I was having a great time skiing. I fell in love with it because I changed the way that my brain was wired. It wasn't just some magical moment where I decided, yes, I'm going to love skiing now and it was that easy, of course. But stacking up those little celebrations time after time eventually made me really, really, truly enjoy it and it started to become something that I looked forward to. And all of a sudden, it started helping me get into better shape. I felt better about myself. I became more athletic and I've done this in other areas of my life too. When building a business at first, I would dread making content or, you know, working on my marketing efforts because it felt like I really had to do something I wasn't good at. It wasn't natural to me, but with practice, practice, of course you get good at stuff. The key is while you're practicing, you've got to have a good time. And so again, every time I would finish a piece
piece of content, celebrate. Not when it goes viral, not when it performs well, not when somebody else tells me that it's good, but in the moment of creating, in the moment of putting in the effort. The equivalent would be if you were planting potatoes in the ground. You celebrate after they're planted and you've taken care of them, not when they grow up and give you your yield. Same with investing, same with relationships. If you don't celebrate the wins along the way, if you don't celebrate the effort that you're putting in and all the glory is left until the end, then you will become miserable and exhausted. You will feel like you're giving more than you're getting back. There's an imbalance there. What we're really doing is hacking that balance and making it more of a fair transaction so that every time you put in effort, every time you put in work, you're getting rewarded. Yes, you're doing it manually, you're triggering it, but eventually it becomes habitualized and automatic and you don't even have to think about it anymore. It's unconscious and it's so easy. It happens on autopilot and your life is that much better for it. Having worked with over 800 clients, I've seen how this leads to mastery in many different areas of their lives and in my own life. And so I really invite you to try it out today. Celebrate the small wins. And if you really want long-term lasting change and to feel motivated every single day, then keep practicing it. Also, if you'd like to take your performance, your goals, and your skills to the next level, then I invite you to come work with me one-on-one. -on -one. All you got to do is click the link in the description. It's eraphael.com. And over there, you can book yourself a free consultation with me personally. We'll talk, we'll jump on the call and see if we're a good fit. If I can help you reach your goals and achieve what you want in your life, then we can partner together and I can help coach you every week to be accountable, to push yourself, to really make the most of your time and energy. And finally, I just want to remind you that you decide your state. You are the person who's in control of how you feel and you can't let the world or circumstance just blow you around like a leaf in the wind and feel however you end up feeling. You've got to take charge and decide, okay, how am I going to show up today? What state am I going to be in? What state of mind am I going to really indulge and hold and be in in order to achieve and accomplish what I want? Again, if you preview the state that you want to be in once you're successful, if you bring that into the current moment, it's so much easier to do the right thing and to feel the way you need to feel in order to do it.